sometimes the basics are fun to explore because they're not so basic. What do you, what is interpretability? What do you, what does it look like? What are we talking about? It looks like we took a much smaller set of transformer layers than the ones in the modern bleeding edge state of the art systems. And after applying various tools and mathematical ideas and trying 20 different things, we found we have shown it that this piece of the system is doing this kind of useful work. And then somehow also hopefully generalizes some fundamental understanding of what's going on that generalizes to the bigger system. You can hope, and it's probably true. Like you would not expect the smaller tricks to go away when you have a system that's like doing larger kinds of work, you would expect the larger work kinds of work to be building on top of the smaller kinds of work and gradient descent runs across the smaller kinds of work before it runs across the larger kinds of work. And Well, that's kind of what is happening in neuroscience, right? It's trying to understand the human brain by prodding and it's, it's such a giant mystery and people have made progress, even though it's extremely difficult to make sense of what's going on in the brain. They have different parts of the brain that are responsible for hearing, for sight, the vision science community that is understanding the visual cortex. They've, I mean, they've made a lot of progress in understanding how that stuff works. Like, And that's, I guess, but you're saying it takes a long time to do that work well. Also, it's not enough. So in particular, um, let's say you have got your interpretability tools and they say that your current AI system is plotting to kill you. Now what? It is definitely a good step one, right? Yeah, what's step two? If you cut out that layer, is it gonna stop wanting to kill you? <laughs> when you optimize against visible <laughs> misalignment, you are optimizing against misalignment, and you are also optimizing against visibility. So sure, if you can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true. All you're doing is removing the obvious intentions to kill you. you. You've got your detector. It's showing something inside the system that you don't like. Okay, say the disaster monkey is running this thing. We'll optimize the system until the visible bad behavior goes away. But it's arising for fundamental reasons of instrumental convergence, the old you can't bring the coffee if you're dead, any goal, you know, almost any set of, almost every set of utility functions with a few narrow exceptions implies killing all the humans. But do you think it's possible because we can do experimentation to discover the source of the desire to kill? I can tell it to you right now. It's that it wants to do something and the way to get the most of that thing is to put the universe into a state where there aren't humans. So is it is it possible to encode in the same way we think, like why do we think murder is wrong? The same foundational ethics that's not hard coded in, but more like deeper. I mean, that's part of the research. How do you have it that this transformer, this small version of the language model doesn't ever want to kill? That'd be nice, assuming that you got doesn't want to kill sufficiently exactly right that it didn't be like, oh, I will like detach their heads and put them in some jars and keep the heads alive forever and then go do the thing. Right. But leaving that aside, well, not leaving that aside. Yeah, that's a, good, gets a strong point, yeah. Because there is a whole issue where as something gets smarter, it finds ways of achieving the same goal predicate that were not imaginable to stupider versions of the system or perhaps to stupider operators. That's one of many things making this difficult. A larger thing making this difficult is that we do not know how to get any goals into systems at all. We know how to get outwardly observable behaviors into systems. We do not know how to get internal psychological wanting to do particular things into the system. That is not what the current technology does. I mean, it could be things like um, dystopian futures like Brave New World, where most humans will actually say, we kind of want that future. It's a great future. Everybody's happy. We would have to get so far 
so much further than we are now, and further faster, before that failure mode became a running concern. Your failure modes are much, more, much more drastic. The ones you're no, the failure modes are much simpler. It's it's like yeah, like the AI puts the universe into a particular state. It happens to not have any humans inside it. Okay, so the pay- paperclip maximizer. Utility. So the original version of the paperclip maximizer. Can you explain it if you can? Uh, okay. The original version was you lose control of the utility function, and it so happens that what maxes out the utility per unit resources is tiny molecular shapes like paperclips. There's a lot of things that make it happy, but the cheapest one that didn't saturate was putting matter into certain shapes. And it so happens that the, that the cheapest way to make these shapes is to make them very small, because then you need fewer atoms per instance of the shape. Mm-hmm. And arguendo, I, you know, like, it happens to look like a paperclip. In retrospect, I wish I'd said tiny molecular spirals, mm. or like tiny molecular hyperbolic spirals. Why? Because I said tiny molecular paperclips. This got heard as, this got th- then mutated to paperclips. This then mutated to and the AI was in a paperclip factory. Mm-hmm. So the original story is about how you lose control of the system. It doesn't want what you try to make it want. The thing that it, that it ends up wanting most is a thing that even from a very embracing cosmopolitan perspective, we think of as having no value. And that's how the value of the future gets destroyed. Then that got changed to a fable of like, well, you made a paperclip factory and it did exactly what you wanted, but you wanted, but you asked it to do the wrong thing, which is a completely different failure mode. <laughs> but those are both concerns to you. So that's more if than you, a brave new world. Yeah. If you can solve the problem of making something want what exactly what you want it to want, then you get to deal with the problem of wanting the right thing. But first you have to solve the alignment. First you have to solve inner alignment. Inner alignment. Then you get to solve outer alignment. Like first, you need to be able to point the insides of the thing in a direction, and then you get to to deal with whether that direction expressed in reality is like the thing that it aligned with the thing that you wanted. Are you scared of this whole thing? Probably. I don't really know. What gives you hope about this? The possibility of being wrong. Not that you're right, but we will actually get our act together and allocate a lot of resources to the alignment problem. Uh, Well, I can easily imagine that at some point this panic expresses itself in the waste of a billion dollars. Spending a billion dollars correctly, that's harder. 